Hi, my name is Michael Shields. I am the new brand ambassador for Christie's Direct 2020. Um, I'm here to do a wee bit of hand strapping on this little schnauzer here. His name is Coco. Hand strapping is a very old technique that has been around for years and years and years and years. Now there's different coat types in hand strapping and this little coat here, he's a wired haired. Um, he's a little schnauzer and he's absolutely beautiful. Now he has been stripped there over a week ago but we're going to do a little bit of demonstrating on him how it is you hand strap a dog and what it is we would recommend as in what I do in my salon. Now this is my version of hand stripping and this is how I do it and this is how I teach my students how to do it. Anyway, we're going to talk about a few products that I would use while doing the hand stripping and why it's important to hand strip the coat. For this type of coat he has a outer coat which is the wire coat and then he has a little undercoat which is the soft uh, grey coat. The wire will be very like like a grey wiry hair, it's the same as what's on here at the tops of the legs. I've left the bit and the dog just to do a little bit of a demo on him and let you know how it is that I actually do it. And um, this wee dog here is just coming up in a year old. He's got a fantastic coat. Now not all schnauzers you can hand strip and there's different techniques and people have different views on hand stripping. For me, um, I couldn't take a pup and take it under a ring and do that severe hand stripping on him and roll the coat in that because I don't have any of my own in that kind of a coat. But I couldn't do the pulling out the hair completely and leaving the dog bald. I just couldn't do it. That's just something I just can't do. But anyway, there's a lot of people out there that does it. So I would like, just like to start by saying um, or by showing you a few things and techniques that I would do. Now he has been washed this morning so his coat has pores and things, his coat will be a bit soft. I had to give him a wee bath before we travelled up here. And um, the things that I would recommend um, to do before you take him to the bath would be strip out the coarse coat and get it down. Now he's young so we're stripping him right back, we're not rolling the coat. Rolling the coat's a very different technique. This is a salon hand strip and um, for anybody here that wants to watch this little demo then it will help you in your salon when you get a wee dog in for hand stripping. Now he has been stripped out probably every four weeks um, since he was say about six months. He's just turning a year now and he's absolutely beautiful. So say hi to little Coco. Hi. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to just get on and show you a wee bit of the technique and what it is we would recommend. So first of all, before I would take him to the bath, you can use strip grip. Strip grip is fantastic. It is a powder that you just tap over the coat and it'll give you a, a, a little grip while you're pulling out the hair. Now you can, if you're starting out the coat, um, if you're not too familiar with hand stripping tools, Things I would use would be all different knives and things. So the, first of all, I would use a carding knife and I would card through the coat to try and re release any of the undercoat, the dead hair that wants to come off. And you will get a lot of um, the wire hair as well coming off along with it. So it'll make your hands strip a little bit easier in the salon. You just hold your, your, your knife. This is a coarse um, carding knife. You just hold it flat not too flat like in this angle and you pull it through the coat to release all the dead hair underneath and that'll bring out the wire hair that you need to pull out with your fingers and your stripping knife. Now that's the coarse knife and then I would move on to a fine knife and I would go through the same situation the whole way over the dog just to flatten out that coat and take off the dead hair and at the top of the head you do exactly the same and it also springs out the colour, it is fantastic. You need these knives if you're going to be doing it. Some people don't use them but I do, I like them and this is how I do it. Then I would move on to my stripping knives. Now, with the stripping knife, nine times out of ten I don't really put a lot of chalk on the dog when it's after it's been bathed because when you, when you after you bath the dog the pores open and the chalk can block the pores. So if you're going to strip the dog I would recommend you strip it the coat, the body coat out before the bath and if you want to use chalk then that's fine but if you're going to bath it, if it's really dirty and you want to get it clean before you go onto the, uh, onto the stripping of the coat then I would recommend a thumble 
or finger and thumb condoms or anything at all but these wee thimbles are great for giving you grip and I love these little knives, they're double sided they're just wee green professional knives and they've got a coarse and a fine for stripping out the coat, I always go with the coarse side first but this side of the knife the part with the ridges that runs down it is the part that you put on the dog's coat and you keep it in an angle and what you do is you just run your finger up the dog, get the long strands, don't dig this onto the dog's skin, you don't need to, you just pull it out nice and light the whole way down and if you go down under the undercoat you will leave the dog bald, we don't do that in our salon, we don't allow you um, to pull the dog out bald. It's, it's, for me, I don't like it, it's just too much, but this is how we do it, and it's very simple, guys. Just stand up, Coco, stand up. I know you're tired, so. And pull it out. Now, it doesn't have to be, I've watched a lot of people doing hand stripping before, and they're yanking that coat out, and we're going like this here. You don't have to, you can make it as comfortable as you want. Take your time, do a section at a time, pulling that coat down. Now, as I say, he was already stripped about, uh, about a week ago, just over a week. And then I realised I had to do this video, so I should have kept it, but I forgot that, that I was coming up at the, at the, that it was so soon. So we stripped them all out, but it's very difficult to get a strip coat, especially with schnauzers and things, if it's just um, a pet, as they don't want them stripped out, because as you know yourself, it's very expensive to get a dog stripped every four weeks, and to do it uh, as a pet and not, you know, not um, a salon trim, then people people don't want to care or can't pay that kind of money because it is very expensive but what we do is we just go along the coat all the longer strands the wired hair not the undercoat so you don't touch the skin just glide over the top pull out the wire hair strip it back and if you were to roll this coat then you'd be doing that every three two to three days every three to four days depending on the coat and what you'd be doing you'd be doing it with your finger and thumb and you'd be just rolling that coat to leaving a nice harsh harsh coat but he's very very young and his harsh coat's only coming through we've actually stripped him down uh, I think four times since he started getting stripped and it is starting to come through very very well now um, he's a very very soft undercoat and I don't recommend pulling that undercoat out as it's too sore for me I couldn't do it I, I just don't know how to do it and I, I couldn't do it but for a salon trim this is the best technique that I, I could advise anybody to do just to just glide over the coat and get it down and when you're getting into the neck hair what we do we do not any dog like this we you, you don't have to strip all this out yes they do for shows and things the neck and things we don't strip it out we clip this we clip this in a tan and we clip it all reverse up on, on just a normal schnauzer trim. So from the corner of the eye down to the first whisker, there's another whisker under the chin where you clip it up to there and round again and that gives you your angle and your face. And it is, it's easy enough to follow if you would just take your time and look for the, the whiskers and not go mad pull or shaving all the hair. And some people leave too much at the side of the face and things like that, that's fine. But for us, we clip all this flat work right off they do, they do show people do strip this out, I don't know, I don't do it, I, do, I just don't do that part of it, but this here we do, we just do the whole jacket, keep it all pulled out, and try and tease the wire hair to come through, and take it out as you go along. Now, the back end as well, for his back end, round his tail, his flat work as well, so all this is called flat work, right? And what we do here is we just shave that as well with your number 10 up the base of the tail of the 10 and then strip over the top of the tail, strip all the top, all the top jacket down under the legs and things. But mo nine times out of 10, we just clip this all off here, just down here, can you see that? And right down underneath the bum and just the rear angulation. Just clip it as normal, like a normal schnauzer. A lot of show people out there pull that out as well. I don't, I don't do it, we don't do it because we're not show people, we're just groomers. But this is how it's done. And then when you, if the coarse knife and the fine knife don't grip any of the undercoat, I love these little groom professional. There is a blue one and a red one. I just have the red one here today. Stripping knives. These are exactly the same as the Be Groom Professional double-ended stripping knives. But these ones for me are my favorite. I really like how they finish the coat. They give you a good grip and they're round, they're like half mooned if you can see that. So it's a great grip and they're nice and wide so that you've got a good firm grip on them. And you're just pulling through the coat, nice and light. 
actually release that hair. And then if you've got the right down and you've got the coat sitting the way that you want it, and these aren't doing any more for you to make it help you flatten that coat, what I do is I just use these little groom professional knives as well to card the coat. You leave a lovely finish. And when you're carding the coat, stretch the skin, pulling through the coat, and you will release all that undercoat and dead hair that needs to come out. And it'll enhance and help the, the new firm or the hard hair just to come through the coat. So the wire hair will come through and you'll see a nice flow of wire hair coming through and that's the new hair coming out. The dead hair you've already removed by stripping it. Just go down through the coat like so, stretching the skin. Good, be good man. And down into the flat work where you've clipped. Hope you can see that. And you can see how much hair this takes out. This is a great bee knife, both for stripping and carding after you've done your stripping out. So anyway, we're back to this now. So when you've got your stripping done, pulled out all the dead hair, pulling out all the, all the coarse coat and getting it down to this stage of the dog, then you just run through it, as I say, with the little uh, stripping knife that you've been using or your carding knife. Now, sometimes whenever you've got the, the dog pulled back, the carding knives don't grip the hair underneath. They're great at the start of the groom to pull out all the dead coat and getting rid of most of the hair that you don't need and that you don't, you know, you're not going to be spending hours pulling and pulling and pulling and trying to get it out. It's a faster technique of stripping out the dogs in the salon. But as you can see, the knives aren't pulling anything else out, very little. It's ticking out of the coat. So these wee ones, after you're using them as stripping knives, then you just go through the coat, as I say, and get rid of all that dead hair. And just smoothing out the coat, because the coat will lie really flat and lovely for you at the end of your groom. Now, we're going to move on to the side and how you pull down in. Now, here, very tender, right along the dog. And any dog, it's very, very tender. You're pulling down into the dog's coat. Yes, you are stripping it, coming back, taking all the outer coat off, and then the undercoat then, you know, you have, you have to dilute this line, this line here when you're leaving your furnishings, your underline. Use your finger and thumb, and just lightly pull down, stretching out that coat to blend this line that you leave when you're pulling with the knife. Now be careful because you can leave this part really bald. So just a little bit at a time, and keep checking that you haven't pulled out too much. Lift up the coat and just lightly pull it. Now you can see whenever I'm doing this that there's hair coming out, right? This dog's very, very comfortable. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt at all. It's when you start going extreme and you start showing dogs and things and you're going under that coat and you're pulling out that dead hair. You're pulling out the undercoat. That's whenever I just go, no, I can't do that so I don't touch it. But there's a lot of people out there that are doing this for years and years and years and they're professionals at what they do and they show schnauzers and they show all different types of uh, wired haired dogs and they do that, they pull them bald. And if that's something that you wanted to do and go down that line, then there is a lot of people that will help you with that and show you exactly how to do it. They do it and they don't hurt the dog, but for me, I would feel as if I was hurting the dog so I just couldn't do it. So anyway, we're getting back to here. This part of the dog where you leave your blending lines. So a lot of people take a, a thinning scissors and things and take that out. You don't have to. Just lift the hair and just lightly pull it and you just blend that through. And these wee thumbles as I've got here are fantastic so you can reuse them and reuse them and reuse them. Now this one's a bit small for my thumb but they do the job. You can also use the finger and thumb condoms as well, which I don't have with me today. I didn't lift them, but I do have all these stuff. So anyway, you can use this or use the finger and thumb condoms. They're fantastic. Now for all your fine detail and work around here, you know, just to get that nice and smooth and make it nice, because you will get wee bits sticking out, just use the red one. The red one is your fine, and then there's a blue one in these, and that's your coarse, or else just use the Grim Professional ones as well. These are both Grim Professional, and this one has a coarse and a fine all built into one. And this is for salon trimming. This is not for show. And that's how we get that coat stripped out. 
Now, when you're working on your flat work, a lot of people will blend all this area with a pair of blenders. Just get your, your stripping stone or your stripping knife and come round. What do I just move myself a wee bit? Turn your dog to the side. The hair, where the hair grows, it grows down into the dog. It's not coming back the way, so you're not going to pull it this way. Lift your and get right on there and go take that as flat as you can. Yes, you're sort of going a wee bit bald, but not too much. And you're just pulling that coat down in the direction that it grows to get it to go flat into the clip work where you've clipped it from the ear down into the chest and then you clip right down here or you can pull this all down to blend it. Just lift it up, the technique is up, grab, pull, up, grab, pull and you don't have to yank it. People just go away from hand stripping because they think oh, it's really, really sore on you and this, that and the other. It is if you're not doing it right. But if you're doing it right it shouldn't hurt you. You should just be relaxed and the dog should feel relaxed and the dog shouldn't be turning around trying to snap at you and things like that because you're, if, you're, if you're pulling it wrong then you're, the dog's going to be uncomfortable and it's not going to be a very nice experience for him. But if you're just, take your time, pull it in sections and just it'll come out very easily. Just lift up, grip, pull, up, grip, pull. Getting that down, blending that down under the shoulder. And that's basically how we do it in the salon. And I'm using the Wee Grim Professional Double Ended because we've got the coarse and the fine. Then whenever you're pull, pulled all the, 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 the coat out, turn it around to the fine. So we use the coarse first, turn around the fine and just detail it a wee bit. Just pull out the bits that you've missed to get that line sharp. Now here around the rump and then the tuck up here, where they call the tuck up of the rump where you're starting your line. When you're blending that, pull it back, stretch that out and just lightly go over the top of it. Just to dilute your blending lines because a lot of people, I see a lot of people that do stripping and whatever and if they're in a competition or something, I always see a lot of lines here going under the leg. Just lift it up, remember to lift your coat using your, thing and your finger and your thumb and just go across it, pulling out so that you're blending that line into the top of the leg to create that rear angulation. And where I take that line to, even in the, if you're clipping the dog, if you're doing a clip dog or whatever, where I take that line to is the fold of the leg. I don't go any lower than that. So if you bend that knee, you'll get where your thumb rests in there, that's where that leg folds, that's where you strip to or that's where you clip to, wherever, whatever it is where you're going to do it. This is how we do it. And this is my take on how I hand strip out a wee schnauzer. Now as I say, it was done a couple of weeks ago, so there's not that much to come out. But every four weeks I would get him in, and I would strip out his coat, and then obviously finish off his furnishings and his legs and things like that. And I'll talk you through all the scissor technique and what it is I do whenever I'm getting these angles on these legs. And Getting the dog finished off. Hi Coco. He is lovely, isn't he? Lovely wee thing. So if you can look closely here, you'll see that I have, this is a lot shorter here than the rest of the jacket. And a lot of, a lot of the show and things like that do that as well. When they're writing show rings and that, they just shave all this and then they clip this on, or they strip this on it. You can dilute it by just pulling it down and you know, it, Obviously don't shave back towards the coat, shave away from it at all times and then dilute it in by just stripping it back and using your fine side of your knife to do it and that'll pull it in, that'll help you blend that. And another technique that you can do as well when you're stripping in a salon, you get a dog and it's got a really really thick coat and it's back coat's really thick and you've been clipping the face and you've been doing bits and pieces, then what I would do is I would do your normal clipping lines with your number 10 getting that angles under the neck and things. Then take out a skip tooth, number four, blade and blend it by just running over it and taking that right down onto the shoulder and that'll help you blend that out. And then it's very little, little stripping for you to try and get rid of the lines that we leave behind when we're doing our flat work here. And all you've got to do then is just get your number four, 
can just clip over the top of that or even a comb attachment or something just to dilute them lines and then just pull through it nice and light and you'll get that lovely finish there. Now and another wee tool that for all you beginners out there that are going to be stripping out dogs. These are wee stripping stones, right? And this is the designer dog, stripping stone. They are fantastic, you know, they're harder. You get a lot of different stripping stones and you get the groom professional stripping stones and all. These ones are nice and firm and hard and you can use these as your stripping knives. Now, this is, if you're a wee bit more experienced, yes, you will get the job done a lot faster and a lot easier with the, the stripping knives. Uh, you can also get wee detailers as well, but I don't have any with me today, but they are on the catalog and they are wee fine tuning detail knives. They're like wee stones. They come, they're, they're a stone, but they're very fine tuning and they're for doing around the ears and things, but you can also use this. So you just hold it exactly the same as a knife. Obviously it's a lot bigger, but all you do is exactly what you've done with the knife, up, push the hair up with your finger or your thumb or your thimble or whatever it is you have in your hand and just go over it. Nice and light, don't dig into that dog's coat. There's no need to dig into that dog's coat. This is just a salon stripping. There's nothing to show about or anything else. There's all different ways of doing it and some people will agree and some people won't. This is the easiest way for me to do it and this is how I teach people to do it because it'll make the dogs comfortable and you're not going to hurt it. And you just go over it lightly. You're not grabbing the coat and yanking it out where a lot of people do. And another wee tip of these things as well, they're a fantastic wee tool for round the ears and things because it's nice and soft. Now when you're stripping out an ear, I need to move him a wee bit. Right, so when you're stripping out an ear, now I'm behind the dog so it's very difficult for me to do that. I would normally stand at the side but just gripping the hair and pulling it out. Now some dogs let you strip the ears, some dogs ears are very sensitive, some dogs ears are that the hair's tough or whatever. There's a lot of people just blend the ears or clip the ears or whatever. I like to strip them out and just give them the same kind of length of coat on the top of his head. They balance out the dog's head. So people shave them. I don't do that. And then when you've all that done, when you're pulling all that out right and round the head, top of the head, you do, when, when you're starting out the strip, I, I, I strip this completely bald because it's not as sore as, or it's not going to hurt the dog or irritate the dog. I strip this out completely bald. It has bald patches on it whenever I start stripping a, a schnauzer from pup. And the reason I do that is because the top of the head, the coat takes a bit longer to come through in my experience. So what I do is I just pull it all out, it's bald. And I mean bald, the same as that the side of that face. There's nothing on it, it's more or less skin. With little bits of strands of wire hair coming through it because if you, know a wee bit about stripping and you're doing a bit of hand stripping then when you get the wee snousers on to start this part of the coat is very 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 soft it's, it doesn't develop as fast as the rest of it and the, the, this part you get a lot of wire hair through it and that's when you start your strip and you can tell when this dog's ready to strip i always strip him from they were no age to get the, them used to it and look, look look at how comfortable he is and he's not even a year and he's had this done four times this is his fifth time now me going over his coat now i'm just going through it pulling out like you would do with the stripping knives, but this will not break the coat. This is the key to these, it'll not break the coat, where if you're not too experienced with these and you start yanking coat, you're just gonna snap it. You never flick your thumb. Never do that, because you're just breaking off the coat. A lot of people think if you strip a coat like this and you go like this and you go like this and you go like this. Yes, when I started out, I thought that too, and I probably messed up loads of coats. But as we, as we um, go through it, as you get older and you get a wee bit wiser and you're a wee bit more experienced, then you, you know exactly what it is you have to pull and what you have to strip. I strip right down, right under the eye here, over the top of the eyebrows, getting that shape, pulling it back. Now, if I had a, had a wee pup today, I would have stripped that whole head out and showed you how to do it. And yes, you think, oh my God, he's gone bald. Yes, I did that at the start, but when I went and learned from one of the best hand stripping people that I know in the country that are a friend of mine through Facebook. When I learned the technique and they do the whole show thing, I can't do it here. I just I just haven't done it yet, but I will do it in the head because it's not a sore. So it's like getting your eyebrows plucked. It's not that sore. But they don't they, he doesn't flinch. So what we do is just do this. When you're finished then all the body, the ears, getting your lines and putting your clip lines in, I'll show you, I'll demonstrate the clip lines as well, because I've got a wee clipper over there, I'll do that now in a minute. When you're finished doing all that, right, and you've got all this done and head out and you've got it nice and flat, they don't have to be 
loads of hair, they're bald or whatever. But if, as I say at the start, whenever you're just starting out the groom, as a pup, then you will pull that ball, but don't be afraid of that because it will come back and it'll be nice and coarse then whenever it's finished. And it'll take a, maybe another two grooms to get that nice finish on the top of the head. From my experience, it takes another two grooms. And then again, some other people say, beg to differ, but this is how I experienced it. I just keep going, using my stripping stone, get all that out. Then to get a nice finish on the dog's coat, these stripping stones are fantastic. Just hold it and brush the coat as if you're brushing the dog. And that'll leave you a nice smoothie kind of a finish. And I'll take out all the wee dead hairs that you forgot. So these are the must have tools for hand stripping. Your designer dog, stripping stone, or any kind of stripping stone. But these wee ones I like, because they're, they're not too big. Some of them you get, they're massive, and you have to break them and try and use them. These ones here, they're great, and they last forever. All my students get these in their pack. Your grips, your strip grip, your carding knives, coarse and fine. Even your, this way, if you're just starting out your stripping, don't be spending too much money on big expensive stripping knives when you don't know what you're doing with them. But these wee Grim Professional ones here, perfect for uh, salon stripping, for teaching your students, or whatever it is you're getting out of this, this is what I use. And then these wee ones as well, I love these, these are the ones I use. Even if I was to do a competition dog or whatever, if I was in a ring or something, these are the knives I use. I love them, I love the grip, I love the feel of them. And they're so comfortable in your hand, and they're so easy to use because they're curved and they're a fantastic wee knife. They're also groomed professional. Of course you need your nice slicker brush to finish off the dog's coat. And don't lean too heavy when you're, when you're brushing through it. And don't keep brushing because, as you know, after you strip out that coat, the skin's very delicate and the pores are opened. That's why I don't recommend putting this on if you bath the dog first. Because if you put, bath, put this on if you bath the dogs first, then you're just blocking the pores. And when you block the pores and the hair follicle, it's that can cause havoc and cause skin conditions and things like that. Another wee tip is the X Factor Serum. It is fantastic. It's a detangler, right? Also, I go crazy over the Designer Dogs Amazing Tricks and I do love the uh, detangling spray wonder coat as well from Grim Professional, but these ones I really, really like as well. For whenever you're finishing off the coat, just a light mist to help that coat sit when you're finished. And this is even for competition rings or whatever, and it gives a lovely shine to the dog's coat and helps brighten it up a little bit because when you pull it out it leaves it a wee bit dull. But if you look at the difference now there whenever I just nice light brushing and you always use your wee small teeth brush, you know the, the finer one. Don't be using the big amplifiers and all and digging on it. The amplifiers are great for the legs and things like that but these wee ones here just to glide over the coat so the wee dog's coats is not too irritated when you're brushing. A wee bit on the ears, and don't be afraid to use it, it's only detangling spray, it's like a conditioning spray, it's fantastic, and it'll leave a lovely wee finish on the dog's coat, so if you look at there, it's nice and smooth, and then if I turn them round, you look here, it's still very flat, so this will nice shine and smooth to the dog's coat, and it's fantastic, I love it, so turn around me man, good boy. Now, that's all my stripping tools that I would recommend that you would use if you're only starting out as a strip, uh, as hand stripping or you're learning it or you go to try it. If you've never done it before and you're watching this video, be careful because I make it look easy because I know what I'm doing. A lot of people out there that have never done it, they start stripping out the coat and then they start getting a dog that's very bald and they go, oh my God, they've no undercoat or whatever. That can happen, but just be careful. I would recommend that you would use th this little knife here because it ha it's a lot easier to use and it's very little teeth on it. To just pull out the heavy coat at the top of the dog's coat. So you've got two coats, you've got the undercoat and the outer coat. The outer coat is fine, the undercoat is nice and smooth and soft. It's like a silky kind of a coat underneath the undercoat. Use it, pull through, and also strip out. You don't lean on the dog's skin and pull from the skin out. You don't do that. You just brush it up, get the longer strands, and come away. Look, my finger wouldn't even be near the dog's skin if it just be pulling out the longer strands. Be careful, take your time, and learn it right. The stripping stones will help you a lot easier if you're just starting out. And for you experienced stripping out there that are stripping for years and doing dogs and show or whatever, you should know what I mean. There's a lot of show people out there that use stripping stones. 
and they are fantastic. Now there are wee detailers, I just don't have them here at the minute, but um, I'm sure we can get photos put up underneath of what they are. And they're brilliant for doing all this flat work around the ears, getting the ears out. No, they're fantastic, we just don't have them with us today. Um, but the, the, the strip and stone, for all these beginners out there, and even the wee detailers, they are a strip and stone. They don't look it, but they are. It's just like, like a wee coarse part on the on it, like a knife, like a like a blade, and you just pull it through like that there. It's just exactly the same as a strap and stone, and it's a lot easier for you to learn. So that's what we do in our salon for hand stripping out schnauzers or any other coat that is wired hair coat. And now there's a sulky gun dog coats, but we're not going to get confused all together. Gun dogs and things like that, like cocker spaniels and red setters and things like that. There's a different technique used all together. We also use carding knives for the silky coat. We don't use stripping knives for the silky coats. We use um, our finger and thumb. And you can use a banded comb and things. A lot of people do that. But I would recommend getting um, undercoat wrecks. So I would be using the Andis undercoat rack that we have here at Christie's and I also would use the Coat Kings, the Groom Professional Coat Kings on a silky coat to pull it all out. It is fantastic and it makes your job a lot easier to get that coat to lie flat but for the wired hair coats it's all about the knives, the strip and stones and the strip grip and your technique. Hi everybody, if you have any questions on running the salon or dog grooming questions please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching my video, don't forget to like Subscribe and follow us on social media at Christie's Direct.